although the quarantine is a hindrance on our college work, I guess we're lucky in the sense that we are able to reflect on it. You know, for most college students, it's a hassle and it's getting in the way of their exams and stuff, but we're lucky in the fact that we're able to document these things. You know, that's what we're, we're doing, we're trying to do, document like social events like this. I, I have a couple of predictions for what might happen, I suppose. You know, how it's going to impact us. And firstly, it could impact our careers from now on. You know, this could even be the new normal. Who's to say we could have to do this for the rest of our lives or something? I suppose mostly it's probably going to be within living memory for the rest of our lives. And we're going to have to reflect on it for the rest of our lives. And it's going to develop us, I suppose. And one other point is, you know, this could become a genre. There could be films upon films made about this time and about how different things happen. You know, this is the biggest event. This is the biggest social event in our lifetime. It could be up there with like a World War II film, some element of filmmaking. I know um, I've watched countless films and countless TV shows and I've kind of got more more of an understanding or a more keen eye for looking at how film, what film techniques you know directors and cinematographers might use. But it also means I'm looking back. Since it started, I was trying to find what I could do, what story I could do, or what new film I could do, and make it as simple as possible. I had a couple of ideas. But these had restrictions behind them, you know, time and periods I could film in the house, you know, because it's now like there's office hours in this house now. We watched these, uh, we watched home videos we had from when Daddy, I was a kid um, a couple of nights ago. And kind of let me know a thought process. Um, firstly, how unique it was to have. The camcorder, you know, it had to be for a special event or something. But now, today, we're filming every day. You know, anyone can just simply record something. Let's keep on moving. I can't die until I have killed my husband. And then I started watching our short films that we did. Short films came on, you know, or even like those little bits of us performing in front of the camera from that. And uh, I thought about how that initially, or my initial start, the in, in interest in film, and um, how that came from short videos that I did as a kid. And my initial interest was in stop motion. So I had to look at my stop motion videos and some stuff I did as, as a child. And this led me on to think about the elements that went into filmmaking. And how unaccessible it was back then. You know, only a couple of decades ago. If you were filming with a camcorder, you had to have tape a big thing of tape you have to have carry around this big charging cable and countless other things you have to have whereas now anyone has the, the ability to just press play and everything is recorded for them and that was another thing i thought about you know when it comes to stop motion the frame rate that we don't even think about when we're filming stuff digitally and also recording sound I, like anyone has the ability to record sound no matter what quality that is of sound but with this stop motion you have to you have to do voiceover or photoing so i thought about having to go at stop motion and seeing how my skills had developed 
I guess, and how I had a better, see what I had a better understanding of, and see how that has developed since the time I've done my first stop motion videos. I noticed while making this um, film that I had a, a better understanding of how physics played a part in the film and in cinema and how I better understood the movements of the of a stop motion person of a stop motion subject and how the world around them moves and that's why I wanted to keep it in one location and one spot and move the world around the figure as opposed to the figure within the world. And one other element of this type of uh, filmmaking that I wanted to explore and wanted to understand more was Foley work. So um, I tried my hand at that. So what I've done here um, is I've put sand in this basin thing here. Why I've done that, um, there is, in you realise in the film uh, or in the video, that there's some movement of him walking across sand or snow even I keep saying sand uh, over snow and so I want to foley that first of all because I think it might engage more of I guess creative side or something of filmmaking and um, <coughs> secondly because it's hard to find just a sound effect of someone walking in snow. Also, because the camera is supposed to be tracking his movement across. The footsteps in snow need to sound like it's right in front of the camera. Or right in front of the microphone in this case. So what I've set up here, I have, thankfully, I have the, the boom mic. And I have a sound recorder here. So it needs to be sound right in the center of the uh, the basin and have a good impact to to give that effect so to spread it out evenly and um, i'm going to use these shoes these boot sort of things because the sole would probably be really good for that uh, and so yeah uh, this is the first thing i've foley this first time i've tried foley and uh i think I think it's gonna gonna be interesting to see how it turns out and how creative I can be with this. So I've set up this mic in a better way on a tripod or on a shoulder mount, um, so it gives it more of a nice weight distribution. So I think from listening, on it, I'm getting a bit of interference with these lights these gato lights so i may need to turn those off so after i got all the the foley parts that i needed um i put those on top of the images that i collect collected earlier and i uh, was able to finish finish the edit
basis of the limbo, or I like to think of it as a, a liminality, a transition between two state, state, uh, states of amateur life in film and professional life in si film. And I think it's a good chance to reflect on our position at the moment in film and cinema and see where we can go to and reflect on where we've come from and how we interact with film and what we see as important elements and important techniques and theories of film.